In this video, I'm going to talk about the swatches palette in Illustrator. So I have five shapes here, and they're the default white fill with a black stroke. And I have my swatches palette ready to go. If you ever can't find any of these panels, you can open the window menu, and they're all here in pretty much alphabetical order. So we can use some of these shortcuts to get started, although in general, unless you're going for these flat grayscale colors, I do not recommend using a color straight out of here or especially multiple colors straight out of this palette. They're all very bright, they're all very clown makeup, and you're going to want more subtlety than these are offering. However, they can be a good place to start. So I have all of these selected. So if I have the fill option on the top, I can click any of these and all the fills will change at once. So let's say I want a color kind of like this. This is the closest one in this really bright palette. So I'm gonna go with this and then I'm going to take that swatch and drag it to the plus icon and that will duplicate it. And that will duplicate it. So we can see it popped up here at the end. So I can double click on that. And again, all of these SWAT, all of these shapes are still selected. I could name it my teal. And then I can add a little bit of blue by pulling up on the cyan. I can reduce the magenta to give it more of a teal look and I can push it towards green by adding yellow and I'll click preview here so you can see or I can push it towards blue by removing yellow so I'm gonna go about there and then the last one here K is our black ink so this will give me different shades of the same color so shades are made by adding black to a color. So I do want a bit of a darker color and more sort of mature looking color than these brights in the default swatches. So I'm going to tweak this color to be a bit more to what I want. And that looks good, so I'll say OK. And I want to make sure I'm keeping track of this swatch. So if you're going to create a bunch of swatches, it's a good idea to make a group of them. So the groups are actually little folders. So if you click on the folder icon, I can name this to, let's just say, Project 2 Colors. And I will create it from the selected swatches. So it's, it has that swatch I just made selected. And I'll say OK. And that will move it for me down to that group. So now I'm ready to set up some tints and shades of this color. And I'm going to start by selecting this first one. I'm going to duplicate the swatch. Drag my new one down here into my group. And then I will select my second box here. And I'll double click this swatch give it a slightly different name, and then I'm going to click the preview box here, and I'm going to increase the black ink value by know, vaguely about 10 or 12. This interval is really going to depend on the color you start with, how you're using it, and that kind of thing. So this isn't necessarily a numerical answer I'm giving you, it's just an interval I'm choosing for this circumstance. So I'll click OK on that. I will select my next one and I'll grab this second swatch and apply it and then I'll drag that to the duplication put it in my group double click on it click preview and then I'll add another similar interval of black uh, I'll repeat that process one more time so I select the next one I'll click on my now darkest swatch. I will duplicate it by dragging it to the new button. Drag that new one down into my group. 
double click and add more black in about the same interval. So this swatch has some black in it to begin with. So to make a tint, I'm going to go with my lightest one, duplicate it, drag that one to the beginning of my group, double click the swatch, edit that name, and then I'm going to remove some black. And I'll click preview so I can see what I'm doing. So I can reorder these so I can see a bit more of the change through these values. And I could continue that process as many times as I need to. So it's a good idea to start with a color that already has a decent amount of that black in it so that you can get some shades going darker and some tints going lighter. The other thing that can be useful in this project is opacity. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select all these and I'm going to remove the stroke. So usually when you have a stroke and you're using opacity, the stroke, especially in this case where it's not really adding anything to the shape, if anything it's adding visual complication, because the black is pretty close in value to a lot of these teal shades. So I don't need the stroke to begin with and it's going to look extra messy once we start using opacity. So I'm going to stagger these shapes a bit and pay attention to the way that they are overlapping. Now these three should be underneath in sort of the lightest to darkest logic. So I'm going to select these three. I could open my layers palette, expand this layer, and I could drag them to the bottom. Or I can use the object menu and go to arrange or I can right or on a Mac control click if you don't have a right click set up. And again, go to arrange and say send to back. So all those are gonna go in their current order to the back of my document. So then I can repeat the same thing, go to arrange, send to back, which on a Mac here is shift command and then the left square bracket. Click on this one, I can do shift command and left square bracket on my keyboard, and now I've got them all lined up. So if I select all of these at once, and I go to my transparency panel, again, if you don't have this, you can go to window, and then transparency. So if I go here and I drop the opacity to 50, I now get this overlap. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to group them and then change the opacity to 50 and see the difference. If you group them first, they keep their overlaps. You can't see through them, but overall the opacity is dropped. So just to illustrate that, I'm going to draw a shape and set it to the back so that you can see this group on top so we can see through the whole thing but they're still stacked on top of it. Now if I ungroup this and again I'll drop this to 50 as I did the first time now I can see through each one and I can see through all of them as a group. So it really depends what look you're going for. If you want to have multiples of a shape and group them together to make a bigger shape so they act like one you're going to want to keep them grouped and then control their opacity in the transparency panel. On the other hand, if you want this individual look where you're going to have each shape sort of on its own, then make sure that they stay ungrouped, although you could select them all at the same time and give them all the same number. You can, of course, select each individual object and change its opacity to get different effects. So I'll drop this one put this one up a little high and you can see that they're now overlapping with different opacities. So that's how to work the transparency and opacity settings and the swatches palette including groups and custom swatches in Illustrator.